So anyway, we had this fake kung fu battle in the hotel lobby, and I, never one to shy away from drawing attention to myself, uh, didn't mind getting into this little kung fu battle. So he does this roundhouse kick-ish thing, and I pretend that it hits me in the head, and I turn around and I hit my head on a concrete pillar. It didn't hurt. I mean, it, I mean, it wasn't that bad, but I was just like, oh, well, that kind of ruined the game. Oh, well. So I come back, and I sit that back down. Everybody kind of had a laugh. I, you know, hit my head, and I sit down, and um, uh, he says, okay, okay, what do, you, what do you really do? And I said, um, Uh, <clears throat> I didn't say anything. Nothing would come out of my mouth. My brain is like screaming, tell him your name is David, tell him you work at Grand Rapids, tell him where you came from, but nothing will come out of my mouth. For the next year and a half, I shared my story probably 30 to 40 times, telling people about my job and how I wanted to do this, and it took a brain tumor to finally get me to realize it. But somewhere in speaking through all of that, my wife um, became concerned. She's like, I think, I don't think you should be talking about being healed. Um, you need to wait until you are healed and then, and then you can tell people you were healed. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not it. I'm talking about I have faith. I have hope for the future. I have hope that God is gonna show up and he's gonna heal me. And this went on for a full year and by the end of it, she had come to the conclusion that in a dream, God told her that I had cheated on her, that I had slept with another woman. And I'm just going, who, who are you? You're my wife, you know me, you know I didn't do it. Who is it? Give me the name. Like, what are you talking about? And she was convinced, convinced that I had slept with another woman, which gave her grounds for divorce. So she divorced me based on the fact that I had slept with another woman. Where are you? Hello? Wait, do you see what's happening here? Do you see that my marriage is over because of craziness? Are you, this is what you want? Nothing. Nothing. I know there's a God, I know he created me, but in my time of need, he's not answering me. Healing can only come through true shalom, peace, having full peace. Peace with God, knowing that whatever comes your way, God is aware of it, God can handle it, peace with yourself, not beating yourself up over your sins, allowing you yourself uh, to be redeemed through gr the grace of Jesus Christ, peace with others, even when they just want to get at you, even when they just want to stick their finger right in your ear and just saying, okay, I, you know, I offer you peace. Peace in your circumstances that no matter what happens, God is in control. God knows what's going to happen. When you have those levels of peace, you're set. It doesn't matter when you die, you're going to heaven. God's going to applaud you when you walk through those gates. And when you have that peace, everything is better. I read once that what God originates, He orchestrates. What God originates, what God puts into your life, what God knew He was going to put in your life before time began, He orchestrates it. God orchestrated my depression. He orchestrated my cancer. He orchestrated my divorce for that moment right there to be literally, I'm going to say this, to be the happiest I have ever been in my entire life. We are all bent. All of us. Every single one of us. We are all bent. But we are not broken. This entire world, this entire history, this, this book right here we call the Bible, Noah's sleeping with his daughters, David's having an affair. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, Paul is killing Christians. Everybody is bent, except for one person, Jesus. 
Jesus wasn't bent, but he was broken. He was broken on the cross, you and me.